Yeah, I don't know if the lighting is going to work in this video because, Q, what is your issue? Oh gosh. Hi, my name is Samantha and in 2019 I was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer at the age of 22. At the time I had been dating my boyfriend, Gray who is now my husband, for about a year and four months. Over the years, I've had so many people tell me how awesome and how supportive Gray is, and he really is. I'm so incredibly lucky to have him, and I'm really glad that everything worked out between us through all of the craziness that happened with my diagnosis. Also, over the years, I've gotten tons of questions from people who have just gotten the news that they had a cancer diagnosis or some other serious diagnosis, and they are in a relationship and they're asking for advice. People have asked me how to stay in a relationship through this kind of thing. Some people have asked me how to not stay in a relationship. Some people have asked if they should. I can't give you advice on every single situation in this video, but I can kind of go over kind of the things that we considered and the conversations that we had at the time. This is mostly going to be from my point of view, so if you're the one that's going through the serious diagnosis, um, you might be able to relate to this more, and if you're the one that isn't um, in the relationship, then maybe this can give you some insight into what that other person is feeling. Back in 2019, Gray and I made a video about this together, so if you're more interested in her, his perspective on it, go check out that video. We kind of just answered some questions. I just realized that I have so much more to say about the topic, and especially after kind of giving advice to people over the past few years and people coming to me and asking me these questions, I just... I felt like I wanted to make another video about it. So first let me just give you some background into our relationship so you kind of know what was going on at the time. Like I said at the beginning, I was 22 and we had been dating for about a year and four months. I was diagnosed in March and I had graduated college the May before and was working at my first job. Gray was still in his last year of undergrad at the same college and we lived in like the same city so we weren't doing long distance or anything like that because I mean, if we were, I can't imagine this would have worked. <laughs> I know relationships move at tons of different paces, and so some people, when they've been dating for a year, they're like ready for marriage. That just wasn't really the case for us. Um, our relationship kind of moved slowly at the beginning, because obviously at the beginning we were both in college, and the relationship just kind of moved slowly for a bunch of different reasons. I like to say that the relationship really started picking up in like the fall, so like September 2018 or so. Um, that's when we started getting a lot more serious, but we still hadn't really discussed marriage. I mean, we knew we were taking the relationship seriously and that it could lead to marriage, but we hadn't really discussed that kind of thing in great detail. So, like, we were in a serious, committed relationship, but it wasn't, like, at a super high level, if that makes sense. <laughs> when I first found out about my cancer diagnosis, Gray was one of the first people to know. Um, because he was kind of around when I found the lump. If you want to know my story of how I found out I had cancer, I have another video on that, but um, he was involved and he knew that I was diagnosed, but one of the very first things that I was worried about was our relationship. I've said this before in other videos, but when I was diagnosed, I wasn't really worried about myself at the time. I was pretty confident that I was going to do fine and get through it, but I was worried about other people and how my diagnosis was going to affect them. I knew that it was going to cause my family to worry about me, um, but there wasn't really any way around that because they're my family and they're kind of stuck with me. But I thought, well, Gray's not my family. He does not have to be in this. He does not have to deal with this. I really didn't want to drag him into that because I just didn't want to hurt him and have him have to deal with all of that crazy stuff. It was really one of the first things I said to him after the first appointment. He came with me to the appointment, so did my mom and my dad. And they told me that I was going to need chemo, I was going to need surgery to possibly remove my breasts, I was going to need radiation, and then years of hormone therapy following that. They mentioned how all this treatment could affect my fertility, and they discussed the option of freezing my eggs so that maybe um, if I couldn't have children naturally, IVF could be an option in the future. And it was just a lot to take in after that first appointment. So. There were obviously a lot of discussions that Gray and I needed to have. So what if I end up not being able to have children at all? Um, is IVF something that we would ever even consider doing? 
is it an issue if I don't have real breasts and I'm like have reconstruction and like a fake boobs or whatever and I'm gonna lose my hair I'm gonna be sick there's gonna be uh, my appearance is gonna change and I'm not gonna be able to do a bunch of things is that going to be a problem and you know all this stuff is like varying levels of seriousness and depending on your relationship, certain things could be higher on the list than others. So there was just a lot that that kind of just was thrown at us that we had really never discussed. Like we hadn't really discussed children or anything like that before. So the first thing that I said to him after that appointment was we got back in the car and I said, Gray, I don't want you to have to deal with this. My family has to deal with it, but you don't have to. And he just looked at me and he said, Samantha, I'm not going anywhere. And it was really nice to hear, and I really wanted to believe him, but I don't know if I fully did. It just sounds awful to say that I didn't really trust him in that moment. And then on top of that, I didn't know if I myself could handle being in the relationship either. I feel like when people from the outside are looking at a couple that is dealing with a diagnosis like this, they really focus kind of more on the person that doesn't have the diagnosis thinking, oh my gosh, that person is so awesome. They're like keeping the relationship alive because they're being so helpful and so supportive. And guys, it's so true. He really, he was so helpful. He was so supportive through the entire thing and the relationship would not have worked without him. But I think what people don't realize is how much the sick person has to do as well. I couldn't just shut down and worry about myself and my diagnosis if I wanted the relationship to work. I was still in a relationship and it wouldn't have been fair to me to just, you know, pass off all of the work all of the time to him. So there was a lot that I needed to do and there was a lot that I needed to figure out for myself to make sure the relationship could work as well. When you're hit with a diagnosis like that, like I said, it's a lot of information to take in. And at the time, I couldn't really imagine giving all of the attention I needed to the relationship when I was given so much to think about for myself. And that's when people say things like, oh, and so that means that the other person just needs to pick up the slack. Gray needs to pick up the slack to make the relationship work. And yes, that can be super helpful and like he needed to at certain times, but how long are you going to ask him to do that? Because this treatment was going to last a really long time, right? So it was going to be at least nine months of active treatment plus the hormone therapy after that, plus all of like the mental side effects that probably were gonna come with the cancer diagnosis after that. And then all the long-term other things that, you know, treatment can cause and cancer can cause. And so how long are you going to have your significant other be the person that is stepping up, that is like keeping you happy all the time? Because it's kind of unrealistic to ask them to do that for that long. And so people come to me and they say, my relationship isn't working out because my partner isn't picking up any of the slack. And I never say this to their face, but I just don't think it should be up to them to do that. I think a relationship is two people and you both need to be able to give each other what you need in the relationship. And yes, I was going through something really hard, but if I wanted my relationship to work, I kind of needed to get my act together and be present in the relationship. And so that's kind of the decision that I was trying to make at the time. I was trying to decide, can I do that? And it's okay if you can't. I mean, I've had people say that they can't. They've decided they want to focus on themselves. They can't focus on the relationship. And that's fine. Um, if you want to take a break, take some time for yourself, do that. Um, but if you decide that you want to be in a relationship, or if you're already in a committed relationship like a marriage, then you just need to make a conscious, serious effort to give attention to that relationship. And so I really needed to think for myself. I needed to think, if I want to be in this relationship, what do I need to do to make it work? And is that doable for me? Also, what do I need from Gray to make the relationship work? And so I decided, and this is just me, you can be completely different obviously, but I decided that in order for the relationship to work, I needed Gray to be fully involved in my diagnosis and the treatments and the appointments and to just know what was going on. There just really needed to be that whole level of communication there. I needed to make sure that I was okay with him 
knowing all of this stuff about me, um, knowing what was going on and what my problems were, the impacts that it could have, and the treatment that I was going on, what that was going to do to me. I needed to be okay with him knowing all of that and he needed to be okay learning all of that as well. The outcome of all of this could affect the rest of our lives. So if we were married, that would affect him. So I just needed him to know all of it. I, can, I went to him and I told him, look, I want you to come to these appointments with me. I want you to understand what is going on. And if you don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how it will affect our relationship. I don't know if I will be able to do it. And it wasn't like an ultimatum or anything because I genuinely did not know how it was going to affect our relationship. I mean, if he said no, like I don't wanna do any of that, I probably would have continued the relationship and kind of seen how far it went. But looking back on it now, I cannot imagine it would have been successful. You can go. And I'm saying this just not knowing anything about him, but knowing myself, I wouldn't have been able to handle him not knowing what was going on. Because the cancer diagnosis and the treatment became so much of my life at the time, it was like the biggest thing that I was dealing with. So if he was just not a part of any of that, it just, it wouldn't have worked. Because like, how do you just, how do you be in a relationship and just not be able to discuss like the most important thing that is going on in your life. Like that's just not possible. There were constant doctor's appointments. There were constant decisions to be made about my treatment and it could have just affected our entire future. If he wasn't involved in that, there's no way that he would have had any chance to know what I was going through. And he still can't fully know what I went through, but he can understand it a lot more because he was there. And like I said before, it opened the door to so many decisions that we needed to make about our future and just questions that we needed to be on the same page on. And if he wasn't involved in those, then, you know, I guess things could have still worked out, but like, why wouldn't we want to talk about them in the moment? And like this didn't happen, but if I wanted to make some decision that he just never would have been okay with, I would have needed to know that because if he was just gonna like not want to be with me because of that, then like it was really important to know that. And if I didn't know that, then it would have driven me crazy. And so then after Gray decided that he did want to be involved, um, I was able to feel a lot better um, in continuing the relationship. But my doubts didn't completely go away immediately. I just kind of kept thinking that what if in this whole process things get to be too much for him and he decides that he can't handle it anymore? What is it going to do to me if I have to deal with a cancer diagnosis and a breakup at the same time? And I just knew it would completely crush me. So if I wanted to protect myself from that, the easy thing to do would have been to break up with them because that would have been one less thing to worry about. I could have just worried about myself, maybe could have come back to the relationship after. But like I said, if I did it like that, he wouldn't have known what I went through. And so it would have been probably not savable at that point. I was just terrified of what it would do to me if you know, I, I had to, if he broke up with me while I was going through treatment, I was just scared of it all the time. And people can say, and people do say, hey, anyone who breaks up with a cancer patient is just a serious jerk. And I just hate it when people say that because they're not. If he realized he wanted to break up with me and that this was too much and that he didn't want certain things, the best thing that he could have done was break up with me. <laughs> it would have been so much worse if we were in a relationship through the end of my treatment and then I finished treatment and he was like, oh, by the way, I was just waiting for you to be done with this cancer thing because I wanted to break up with you. Like, do you know how bad that would have been? I would have let him into my world of everything I was dealing with and he would have known the entire time that he was breaking up with me and he would have known all of this stuff about me that maybe I wouldn't have wanted to tell him if I knew he wanted to break up with me. Like, can you imagine how bad that would be? I just don't understand where it comes from when people say people who break up with people who have cancer are jerks because like, no, they're not. They're treating them like they're a normal person. 
a cancer patient still wants to be treated like a normal person. <laughs> And it's a different, it's a different story if you decide you want to break up later. Like if you're at the very end of the cancer treatment and you decide then that, okay, this relationship isn't going to work out, then that's a completely different story. But if you know kind of like during the middle of everything that like, oh, I want to break up with this person, but I don't want to be seen as a jerk, then you're just a, you're a bigger jerk. <laughs> like who cares if you're seen as a jerk to everyone else? You're more of a jerk to the person that you supposedly love in your relationship. So stop saying it. Stop saying that people who break up with people who have cancer are jerks because they're not. I, it's just so messed up and I can't tell you how many times I've heard it. So basically I was telling all this to Gray one day. I said, hey, if this gets to be too much for you, you won't be a jerk. And I was also telling him that I was afraid it would be too much for him. And he said something then that really, really helped me. This was probably two or three months into my cancer treatment, but he said, Samantha, I want to be here for you. You just have to let me be. And I, I still have just never forgotten that because it just helped me so much. Basically, he was telling me that I just needed to trust him. And this whole time, I wanted to trust him, but I just felt like he didn't know what he was getting himself into. But that's really just kind of unfair because, you know, Gray is a smart guy and he can figure things out for himself. I needed to trust that he knew what he was getting himself into, that he saw all the things and he realized that this was a difficult situation, but he decided it was worth it still. He decided he still wanted to be in the relationship. That wasn't really my call to make. And all I needed to do was just to let him be there and I just needed to fully believe him. So things really changed after that. Um, I finally just believed him fully, trusted him. I let him be there for me. I let him take care of me, do things for me. And of course, every once in a while, my mind would go into a dark place and you know, I would get worried about things, but that happened every once in a while. And it was never, you know, to the extreme that it was before. And it was really hard for me. It was hard for me to let him be there for me. I couldn't just close myself off. I needed to let him in to see what I was struggling with. I really couldn't sit there and feel sorry for myself and feel sorry for him. He chose this. And so I needed to trust that he would take himself out of the situation if he needed to. You know, Gray and I sometimes talk about this time in our lives and he always mentions how it wasn't hard. He always says that people say that relationships are supposed to be hard and when you're going through something so difficult that it puts a lot of strain on the relationship, but I made it easy. Basically, he told me that he thought he was gonna have to do a lot more work to keep up the relationship, but he didn't have to because I kind of kept up my end of it. And I'm not like trying to pat myself on the back or anything, but like, it's the reason the relationship worked. I mean, there's lots of reasons the relationship worked. It worked because Gray was amazing and he was supportive and he was there for me through the entire thing. He learned everything about the cancer and he was involved in all of the decisions and he listened to me, but it also worked because I let him be there because I was able to give attention to the relationship while I was going through this diagnosis, that I wasn't just shutting down and making him do all the work. And I just think that that's something that happens a lot of times when people are diagnosed with cancer or they're diagnosed with any other serious disease. I'm not saying that it's not okay to shut down. Of course it is. People do it all the time, especially at the beginning. It's hard to hear that news. And sometimes you just need to take, you know, a few days or a week or whatever to think about it, to get your mind focused on it. And I'm not saying that you can't do that. I'm just saying that you can't let that go on for weeks and weeks and months and months or else <laughs> you're putting tons of strain on your relationship and you're not giving your relationship the attention that it deserves. So. If you've been diagnosed with cancer or some other serious illness and you're wondering how to stay in the relationship, my biggest advice to you is just to take responsibility for it. You can't just shut down. I mean, some days you might need to. Everybody has hard days, especially right when you're diagnosed, you might need to take a few days and just sit with your thoughts and think about it. But overall, you need to make the decision to trust your significant other and to put the work 
into the relationship that the relationship needs. It's a lot to take on, but it needs to happen if you want it to work. And if you do that, it just makes it so much easier. It makes it easier on you, it makes it easier on them. And these are, these are hard things to deal with, but people get through them and you totally can too. Okay, that's all I have for this video. If you have any questions or advice for anyone else going through the situation, leave them in the comments below. If you wanna to talk to me privately, um, I'm available on Instagram, you can message me there. If you are interested in vlog style videos, I have a vlog channel with my husband that I've been talking about a lot in this video. And uh, subscribe if you want to, to this channel or the other channel. Yeah, that's all, bye. <laughs>